hey, we just want to invite everybody to uh, invite other people next week to this. But tonight we have Dr. Jeremy Thornton here and we are going to be discussing how does um, gut health impact our overall health? And then what are some solutions that you can do that's natural? So without any more ado, take it away, Dr. Jeremy, share what you have for us tonight. Hey, Anna, thanks for having me. Well, uh, my name is Dr. Jeremy Thornton. Uh, I'm an internist. I'm a chiropractic physician and clinical nutritionist. I practice uh, in Missouri. I've been in practice for uh, over 23 years now. Primary focus in my practice is autoimmune disease and chronic inflammatory conditions. And this topic tonight uh, is, uh, it really hits home with me because most of my patients, well, I would actually say all of my autoimmune patients have one thing in common, and that is they have leaky gut. And um, so we're going to talk tonight about leaky gut and, and gut health and how leaky gut comes, to, comes about and, and what causes it. We're going to talk about symptoms and and how to test for it, how to treat it, and, uh, and exactly what leaky gut does, and how many chronic health conditions uh, actually begin uh, in the gut. It's pretty astounding. And so um, I'm going to try to keep this uh, very complicated and diverse topic down to just under 30 minutes, I'm hoping, because nobody wants to spend um, their whole evening talking about gut health, right? Uh, so I'm gonna to try to keep it short and sweet, but hit a lot of valuable information and, and helpful points. And then we're gonna talk about some more recent research and, uh, and some new technology that I'm, I'm able to use with patients. And we're getting some pretty phenomenal results uh, as a result of that. So I'm going to uh, do a little screen share here if I can uh, manage that. <clears throat> and... Um, let me see here. Can you see my screen, Anna? Yes, I can. Awesome. Awesome, guys. And if you guys, as we're going along, if you have questions, uh, as you think of things, feel free to drop them over in the, uh, in the chat box and make sure that uh, I'll, I'll get back to those um, or, or if I can see them as we go along, Anna, if you see something in there, uh, uh, stop me or get my attention. Happy to talk about uh, questions that might come up. So these are uh, leaky gut symptoms. These are probably aren't things that you wouldn't necessarily think are related to gut health, but uh, food allergies and intolerances, uh, GI symptoms, and that could range from heartburn and constipation and diarrhea irritable bowel syndrome, uh, inflammatory bowel disorders, like things like ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, celiacs, bloating, gas, you name it, GI symptoms are often caused by uh, leaky gut. Brain fog, uh, and when we talk about brain, we can also talk about headaches and migraines. Weight gain, unexplained weight gain or difficulty losing weight often is related to leaky gut. Difficulty concentrating, uh, anxiety and depression, skin issues, including acne, psoriasis, rashes, rosacea, eczema, um, asthma, seasonal allergies, hormone imbalances, and autoimmune disease. Let me drag part of this over out of the way so I can see my screen. All right, so these are all potential symptoms um, of leaky gut. I'd also like to throw in there chronic inflammation in general. Um, even things like arthritis, uh, chronic inflammation in your joints and your tendons and your muscles. Um, I found a lot of leaky gut in things like fibromyalgia. Um, <clears throat> I found a lot of leaky gut in chronic fatigue syndrome. When somebody is just has chronic fatigue and they don't know why or where it's coming from, there's no obvious causes uh, when, when tested. Um, I often start with the gut, right? And so um, here are some here are some causes, right? We have uh, your history here could have chronic antibiotic or NSAID use, right? Your non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs um, like aspirin, and ibuprofen, and um, mercury fillings or heavy metals uh, can be uh, a cause of leaky gut. Traumatic brain injuries, chemo or radiation treatments, um, cesarean birth. Um, we won't go into that tonight, but there's, uh, there's benefits of actually uh, coming through the birth canal and, and getting the, uh, those, uh, those beneficial bacteria from our mother. 
uh, gut dysbiosis. Uh, and that just means where we're getting more good guys or more bad guys than good guys, right, in our gut. Um, hormone imbalances can be a cause as well as a symptom. Chronic inflammation and vitamin and nutrient deficiencies. Okay, that could be a history that could lead to leaky gut. So also diet, gluten, right? Gluten is just always, uh, we always hear about gluten, right? And uh, I'm convinced it's not necessarily uh, that wheat is, is just inherently bad, but I think it's what we've done to wheat uh, over the years as we've changed it and we modified it. Um, and it's definitely not the same grain that, that our grandparents ate, right? And I think our immune system uh, doesn't know, quite know what to do about that. And then we, we take pesticides, right? And then we spray it with, uh, we spray it with Roundup and glyphosate. And, and that has its whole, we could do another seminar just on that <laughs> and its, uh, its health effects. But uh, too much sugar, right? Especially here in America, we, uh, we love our sugar. Uh, in uh, inflammatory omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, too many uh, inflammatory fats and not enough anti-inflammatory fats uh, in our diet. And industrial seed oils, right? All of those uh, vegetable oils that we're cooking and frying in um, and seed oils that are, are hard on the gut. And then we have lifestyle. We have things like environmental toxins, right? We just live in a very toxic world. Um, no matter what we do, even when we're trying to be super good, uh, we're surrounded by pesticides and residues and plastics and hormones and uh, uh, all of these things that, uh, that our body has to deal with. Sleep deprivation is a big cause and, and, and how that's related to chronic stress. Uh, alcohol, uh, liver toxicity uh, can be caused by a lot of those lifestyle factors too. And these are just a, just a few things we could all tie together in our history and our diet and our lifestyle that could lead to leaky gut. And so this is just really a good visual. I, I'm a visual learner and I don't like to just read a bunch of words or hear a bunch of people speaking. I want to see pictures, right? <laughs> and this is a great picture of, of uh, a healthy mucosal membrane here, these are what the cells, if we just did a, if we just did a cross section, right, we cut right through that intestinal lining, we looked at it from the side, this is what those healthy cells look like right over here, okay? They call this right here a tight junction. That's where those cells come right up against each other, okay? These little villi right here, can you see my cursor when I'm pointing to my own screen? Okay, these little villi here are where our nutrient absorption happens. Okay, and here's our, our vitamins and our minerals, our food particles, and we talked about that dysbiosis, so we have infections, the medications, we talked about the NSAIDs, we talked about the lifestyle and the chronic stress, and all of these things start to beat up that intestinal lining, right? See how these little villi aren't there anymore, right? Leading to more chronic nutritional deficiencies and malabsorption issues, okay? And see what, what used to be called a tight junction, whoops, let me go back, <laughs> isn't so tight anymore, right? Can you see that? And so now we're just eating our normal food here and these larger than normal food protein molecules are, are escaping through this intestinal barrier, right? Into the bloodstream. And this is where our immune system is, right? And this becomes a problem. And this is why they, get the, they use the term leaky, or sometimes they the, the medical terminology is intestinal hyperpermeability. Um, and this is what they talk about in medical literature. I like leaky gut better, right? That, that's, that's a great visual and that's, that's truly what happens. <clears throat> these things are leaking into the bloodstream. The immune system sees these, these odd proteins, has no idea what to think about that, right? And like it's supposed to do, it's constantly on the lookout, trying to find any bad guys. Is, is this a good guy? Is this me? And, and it labels that, right? And for example, we're going to talk about um, uh, uh, food sensitivities and how that relates to leaky gut. But as those foods come through there and the immune system sees, it starts to label some of those foods, excuse me, as being a bad guy. Once the immune system labels that food as being a bad guy, it doesn't try to figure it out anymore. It knows, right? And it tells all of its buddies, um, and it puts up the wanted posters, right? The kill on site posters <laughs> everywhere. And as soon as it sees that food again, and, and, the, and every time thereafter creates an, an, an inflammatory response, creates an immune response to that food. The thing that's difficult to, to, to realize about uh, food sensitivities is it's not typically the food allergy that you, you think 
that we hear about, right? If we hear about somebody eating peanuts, right? And they swell up and their lips get big or their tongue gets big or they, or they, get, they break out in the hives or they can't breathe, right? Um, and those are really easy to figure out, right? I had a peanut butter sandwich and now I'm in the ER. So it's probably either the bread or the peanuts. So we, we can figure those out real quick. But a lot of these allergies are more of a delayed onset allergy where they say it could be up to from three hours up to two or three days later before uh, we, we have a symptom from that food, right? And if we have two or three or five or 10 foods that our immune system is ticked off at, it would never be obvious that our chronic health condition, that chronic inflammation was related to food. Does that make sense? Um, and so that's, uh, I wanted to give that picture because, um, uh, because I, I, I like that visual and this is truly what it looks like. Um, I even see the uh, uh, slides um, of actual tissue like samples that they've taken. And this is exactly under microscope what that, what that intestinal lining looks like healthy and what it looks like um, in leaky gut. Um, <clears throat> so we can have, it leads to a compromised immune system, right? Allergies, asthma, eczema are examples. Uh, we have nutrient malabsorption, especially in vitamins D, K, B12, magnesium. Increased risk for autoimmune disease. This is why I see this um, in, my, in my patients. Hashimoto's, uh, MS, rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory bowel diseases, right? That's the Crohn's and the ulcerative colitis, lupus. Um, all of these things can start uh, in the area of leaky gut. All right. If we have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. And Anna, you holler at me if, uh, if we have anything, because I can't see the chat right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me look at my notes, make sure I'm not missing anything. All right. So we talked about uh, symptoms and, and causes and the lifestyle and uh, history and diet and all of that. Um, we, we looked at a, at, a, at a visual of the leaky gut uh, talking about testing, right? How do you know, or how would you know, how could you test to see if you had leaky gut, if your symptoms were, were caused by leaky gut? Well, um, it, it is pretty easy to tell because most of the time people have had chronic health conditions, they've sought medical attention, right? and everything comes back normal. Have you heard that before, right? We go to the, go to the doctor where we know there's something wrong with us, right? And they run all the blood work, they run all the tests and know everything's fine. Uh, well, I almost guarantee that uh, that chronic health condition is related to leaky gut, um, at least at some level. So zonulin is a, is a substance that it controls the openings between those, those cells in that tight junction that we just showed you. And as leaky gut starts to become uh, uh, more pronounced, this zonulin increases in the bloodstream. So they can test that in the serum. And so an increased zonulin is a blood test that you can detect leaky gut, okay? Let's see here. Another really good uh, test is, like I mentioned, food sensitivities. If you have food sensitivities, um, you have leaky gut, right? We don't have to test specifically for it. If your immune system is ticked off at several foods, uh, it, it's, it's leaky gut, right? Now, I'm not talking about your, your anaphylactic type allergies, right? Again, the, the swelling and the hives and the can't breathe. I'm talking about these chronic low-grade uh, uh, food sensitivities are, um, are a good test for, for leaky gut. And they call them IgG food intolerance test instead of traditional anaphylactic allergies would be an IgE type uh, of an aller allergic response. And so um, let's see here, that's also a blood test. Um, let me see, make sure I covered everything there. Um, gotcha. And, and how, they, how that ties back in uh, these food sensitivities with things like for example, autoimmune disease. So let's say that um, we're having this leaky gut, right? And then this, these, this gluten, we'll pick on gluten because everybody else does, right? So this gluten is coming through that intestinal barrier um, and the immune system has labeled that gluten as, as evil. And so, you know, it's going along, we're just, we're eating our normal diet and seeing that gluten day in and day out. 
it's ticking off the immune system to create more inflammation, more leaky gut, more damage to that intestinal lining, right? And then the body says, you know what? <clears throat> the, the protein in that gluten kind of looks like the protein in her thyroid. Maybe the thyroid's a bad guy too, right? And now the immune system starts to attack the thyroid. And what do we have? We have Hashimoto's, right? Or Graves' disease, possibly. Um, you know, that, that protein uh, in that dairy kind of looks like that protein in that cartilage in his hands or in his knees, maybe uh, that's a bad guy too. Let's attack that cartilage and now we're dealing with uh, rheumatoid arthritis, right? Or it's attacking the brain or it's lupus, it's attacking other organs and tissues uh, in the body. Um, it can be triggered again from this molecular mimicry that happens um, with leaky gut and food sensitivities. So that's, uh, that's a, a test that could be used. Stool tests are helpful. Um, the, the physician can run a stool test, and, and many of these can be done at the comfort of your own home. Uh, as you can imagine, it's a lot of fun. Um, but you collect a, a portion of a stool sample, and uh, uh, then this is all taken uh, into little vials of preservative, and uh, it goes back in, in, the, in the kit, and the kit gets overnighted in the FedEx envelope to the lab, uh, and the lab can measure all those good guys and bad guys. Um, it can measure um, uh, and tell you what kind of species of then that dysbiosis we talked about earlier of maybe bacteria or uh, yeast or fungus or parasites, possibly. Um, in that, they can also measure um, inflammatory markers that show up in, in, in diseases like ulcerative colitis uh, or Crohn's. Um, they can measure uh, your intestinal immune system. And when you're dealing with chronic infections and chronic allergies, that immune system really starts to tank. Um, and then that can cause, of course, a whole host of, uh, of other problems. And let's see here. Talk about, make sure I covered all of that. Okay, leaky gut diet. The, this is just a general diet that, works well with, uh, with helping to heal a leaky gut. Um, eliminate sugars, okay, your simple sugars. Eliminate uh, your, your starches, your starchy vegetables, uh, for example, your grains, uh, all grains, uh, those processed oils that we talked about and seed oils and, and vegetable oils uh, that create inflammation and damage. Uh, nightshades are a common uh, problem with leaky gut, right? Uh, dairy, uh, and then of course food additives, just your junk foods, and then food allergies. Again, if we can test those those IgG allergies uh, and avoid those while we're trying to heal uh, this leaky gut, we're going to have more uh, more success. All right, so I'm going to talk about um, uh, a substance that I've found to be very helpful in the treatment of leaky gut. Um, so we've got to do those things. We've got to address the lifestyle things that we've talked about, right? We've got to do some things in our diet, but there are things like curcumin that have been shown in studies uh, that will actually repair that intestinal lining. Will, let me, let me go back to that picture, that will repair and get rid of this inflammation, all this inflammation going on, which will repair these tight junctions, which will start the healing of these little villi back to the way they used to be. And that can be done with a natural substance called curcumin, okay? Curcumin comes from turmeric. Many people have heard of that. Many people have even uh, tried it. Um, and let's see here. I think somebody's trying to enter Anna. I don't know. Is that maybe not? Maybe that's just a Mayan. No, I clicked it to let them in. It's trying. Okay, gotcha. My end's probably delayed because I'm screen sharing. Um, and so uh, uh, curcumin has been used for a variety uh, of purposes and uh, uh, and health conditions. But uh, in in this niche, we're going to talk about how curcumin can uh, repair and heal the gut lining. So this one is uh, the American Journal of Physiology and, and Cell Physiology. Curcumin improves intestinal barrier function, 
right? We were talking about that intestinal barrier, that uh, uh, hyperpermeability, modulation of intracellular signaling and organization of the tight junctions. Remember we talked about and showing the visual of the tight junctions. Um, let's see here. Uh, the major site of action of curcumin is therefore likely the intestinal epithelial cells and the intestinal barrier. And by reducing intestinal barrier dysfunction, curcumin modulates chronic inflammatory diseases despite poor bioavailability. And that's one thing that we're getting ready to talk about, the poor bioavailability traditionally of curcumin. Okay, uh, this uh, American Journal, uh, let's see, nope, I went back, I went the wrong way. Uh, let's see here. All right, I think I got my slides out of order here, but um, the major, major side of action of curcumin is therefore, yeah, I already did that one, sorry. Um, International Journal of Molecular Science, curcumin and intestinal inflammatory diseases, uh, molecular mechanisms of protection. So this goes into not only uh, repairing leaky gut, but this is in chronic inflammatory diseases. And it talks about how these diseases such as Crohn's ulcerative colitis, necrotizing enterocolitis are becoming increasingly prevalent. Curcumin can help tame the inflammation involved in intestinal inflammatory diseases, thus improving intestinal barrier function. Uh, in this review, we explore the potential therapeutic properties of curcumin in on intestinal inflammatory diseases, including its antimicrobial. Uh, so, it, so it kills those bad organisms, those bad bugs and immunomodulatory properties. So it's calming in, in these autoimmune inflammatory diseases, it's calming the immune system down, as well as its potential to alter the intestinal microbiome. So it improves the ratio of those good guys, right? It builds up those, uh, those good bacteria. Curcumin may play a significant role in intestinal inflammatory disease treatment in the future. And uh, I, I'm seeing this a lot in my practice. As I mentioned, we work with a lot of of autoimmune conditions and inflammatory conditions. Um, and we're seeing just, just phenomenal improvement with curcumin targeting uh, things just like this. Um, this one is from the Journal of Molecular Pharmacology. And this is what we talked about uh, earlier about the one of the hindrances of curcumin is the bioavailability of curcumin, okay? Phase one clinical trials have shown that curcumin is safe even at high doses, up to 12 grams a day. Uh, in humans, but exhibits poor bioavailability. Major reasons contributing to the low plasma and tissue levels of curcumin appear to be due to poor absorption, rapid metabolism, and rapid systemic elimination. Okay, so it doesn't absorb well. What it does absorb is rapidly broken down and then kicked out of the body through urine and feces, right? And so, uh, so you know, they've known for a very, very long time that curcumin could do some amazing things in lab testing. So they, you know, they would test in the lab, they would test in, uh, you know, in those Petri dishes, they would test in those test tubes, they would test in those lab animals where they could put, you know, inject curcumin into the bloodstream, for example. Uh, and they were getting these ridiculous improvements in inflammatory diseases, conditions, you know, from cancer to, uh, you know, neurodegenerative conditions and different things. Uh, but what they were finding is, is then they were trying to, um, imitate these same uh, responses in humans with an oral supplement, right? Putting curcumin directly uh, by mouth uh, into a human was not creating those same things that they were seeing in the lab. And, and for years, this has been a big hindrance in, in, the, in, the, in the, uh, the forwarding of its use and benefit in humans and human uh, trials. And, and so the, uh, this, this is why I wanted to share uh, a new technology that has just recently become available. Because of this hindrance with, with curcumin being a lipid-like substance, it does, uh, you know, if we, if we take a, a fat or a lipid or oil, right, and we try to, try to take it by mouth and get that into the bloodstream, which is mostly water, we know that lipids and fat and water or oil and water don't mix well, right? And so getting it in the bloodstream is a challenge, an even bigger challenge than getting it into the cell itself um, and, and, and receiving those types of benefits. And, and so this uh, new German technology called BioMS technology 
has changed, completely changed the game in the area of curcumin and bioavailability. It actually increases bioavailability um, by up to 277 times what standard curcumin supplements could do uh, by mouth. Standard curcumin will uh, gets into the body at very low levels and is usually gone within three hours. And uh, what we're seeing with this new technology is it's in the bloodstream within uh, five minutes at a cellular level within 15 minutes and is still measurable in the bloodstream uh, over 24 hours later. And this is, this is what that little substance looks like. It's a little liquid dropper bottle. And what they've done is they've taken those, they've extracted the curcumin out of the turmeric, right? There's curcumin uh, properties. And then they've, they've shrunk them down to the size of less than 30 nanometers. And uh, to give you a visual of what 30 nanometers is, is you took your thickness of your fingernail and you were to put a million slices through that thickness of your fingernail. Uh, one of those slices would be the size of a nanometer. That's how small we're talking. So they've reduced these particle size uh, down to less than 30 nanometers, and they're able to get this, uh, what was previously a very difficult substance to get into the body and into the bloodstream. They're able to easily get it into the body, into the bloodstream, and into the cells uh, with this new uh, German technology. And it has been a game changer for... Uh, me and my practice, um, in my patients, I have used curcumin for over 20 years, um, but have it's it's had its limits, um, and uh, we would see some benefit. But we'd often have to have our patients take it multiple times a day because, like that article says here, it's rapidly excreted uh, by the body and rapidly metabolized. And so we were getting some benefit, but we have to we'd have to dose super heavy. Uh, and we would have to dose multiple times a day. Um, uh, what studies show is that it would take about, to equal 10 drops of this, would take about 27-ish capsules. Um, and, and not very many people want to take 27 capsules multiple times a day. So that's, um, that's uh, uh, what I'm excited about to share is not only the information about uh, leaky gut, how it's, how it's attached and, and, and connected to so many other health, chronic health issues, some ideas on treatment, including diet and lifestyle, um, and the addition of curcumin uh, with this breakthrough science called BioMS technology. So um, I know I've been rambling for a while. Anna, did I miss covering anything? Is there any questions that I can help with? No, once again, you knocked it out of the park. It seems like you always do such a great job I love that visual, getting to see the difference between a healthy gut and a leaky gut. It makes so much sense. You hear the term all the time, but I'm a, I'm originally from Missouri as well, even though I don't live there now. And so I'm, you know, it's a show me state. You got to show me what you're talking about. <laughs> so that was, that was perfect. So hopefully I, uh, is there any questions here? If there is, uh, either unmute yourself and ask or drop your question down in the comment because that's what we're here for. We're here to serve and answer your questions. And if you have more uh, information or have more information, if you have more questions uh, about uh, anything we talked about tonight uh, or this curcumin technology, make sure to get with whoever invited you uh, to the webinar and they will be able to get you some more information. Um, I wanted to mention, Anna, our group called Liquid Gold Wellness um, yeah. is an amazing group on Facebook where it's full of uh, information. We have some science on there. We have testimonials on there of real people and, and, and real animals. I just saw on there uh, yesterday uh, uh, a kitty cat that had, yeah. had, uh, uh, had these chronic mouth sores and ulcers uh, that was uh, that was treated with with the curcumin, so that was kind of a surprising testimonial. But uh, uh, asked has to be added into the liquid gold, um, and you'll be blown away by some of the some of the content in there. Exactly that that group is just packed full of great information, and I just love to read the stories and hear how people's lives have been changed with this little bottle of liquid gold i mean it really has really? been doing some major things i had i had somebody who was sharing with me about how their father's gut has just been like rock hard for forever 
and he's been on it for two months and his gut is now squishy when you touch it it's like it feels more like the pillsbury doughboy versus rock <laughs> solid and so i thought that's that's really interesting you just don't even think about things like that but obviously there's some healing going on there if it's if that's what's going on right removing that inflammation and that bloat i would imagine yes has to be huge so once again we want to thank each and every one of you for coming on and joining us and learning more from the doctor Again, next Thursday night, we will be doing another class. I hate to say this. I normally try to announce what it's going to be next week, but I, we didn't discuss it before. So do you have any ideas what you want to share next week? You know, that's a good question. I will think about that. I, I promise it will be uh, well worth your time. Yes. And what we'll do is we'll post it out there. But come back, learn more, invite your friends in, let them learn right along with you. But get back uh, with the person who uh, invited you here. Uh, the product is super, super easy to use. It's very affordably priced. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So I promise you the only thing you stand to lose is your symptoms. And I love that. You know, uh, we're not saying that this product can cure treat, prevent, cure, any of those words. We're not you saying that. But I do know we were made by our creator in such an incredible way that if we give our bodies what they need, they can heal themselves. So who knows? This may be that secret ingredient that your body has been looking for. So check it out. We can't wait to hear your results. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. Thanks, Anna. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you.